Games of War 4th Edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, we are back for What's in the Box and today we are having a look at Bolt Action. John, mm -hmm. what do we have? We have the classic German truck, the, the uh, Opel Blitz and its other derivative, the Maltair. That's Maltair. what I'm going to call it, the Maltair. Maltair? Maltair. Maltair. Yeah, okay. Maltair. Uh, so right. this, this was the... Do you know the Americans had the GMC? Yes. The, the one that my dad and I used to own yes. and they made several different types of them. Yes. This is the German equivalent of the GMC. It was the most okay, most prolific German truck that they had. Okay, so this is the one that would have just been everywhere. Yeah, used for anything and everything. Right, and what are the two... Oh, right, I see one has tracks, the other does not. Yes, the, the Maltair has uh, a half-track configuration to it. I see, I see. It looks a lot less modern than the, the half-tracks the Americans would have had. Yeah, but bear in mind the German 251 half-track looked super modern. Because had all those big sweeping lines and angular faces yeah. to it and stuff. True. Is this the case of, well, we, ha we have these Opel Blitzes. What if we put tracks on them? I think it's more a case of, um, I think it was genuinely a battlefield need. Okay. Especially because from what I've seen, Maltairs were mostly used in the east. Ah, so when, right. when the um, when the Russian winters hit and yeah. when the, the, more when the thaw happened ah. uh, between autumn and spring, they had so much mud to deal with and the roads were crap. Mm -hmm. So they kind of maybe turned around and went, well, look, we need something that's got a bit more traction to it, so we'll, we'll do this. Okay, well, let's, let's start going through the sprue, shall we? Uh -huh. So here we have uh, one of the big sprues. So I'm guessing cab bed. Yep. Uh, we have a canopy. Uh -huh. We have the, the sides. Yep, the front and sides and the back, I think, as well. Yeah, and you have open and closed tarp at the back, mm -hmm. which is a nice touch. Yep. Uh, you have chassis. Yep. Bare wheel. Yep. Bumper. Uh -huh. All the tires. Uh -huh. Suspension. Suspension. Mud guards. Yep. Uh, track units. Mm -hmm. uh, then some jerry cans, maybe. Uh, jerry cans of stowage. Yeah. Uh, I think a couple of those are actually the battery boxes for the truck. Uh, I see. Okay. Uh, we then come to the crew sprue. Yeah. So, ooh, this is different. This Why are these five linked together? This is nice because the the back of the model. If you look on the back of the box again, uh -huh. they actually have room to put ten guys into the back of the oh, vehicle. Oh, I see. You've got a multitude of different heads, all the legs, all the upper bodies, and, and all, all the weapons. weapons you could want and perhaps shake a stick at. Yes. You then have uh, this next sprue, which has more cab sides. Yep. Or, well, bed more sides. Bed sides, yeah. Uh, you have chassis again. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the... The front of the, the cab metalwork, yep. which is the, the front axle area. Yep. You then have the sides of the engine compartment. Yep. You have the back of the cab, the front of the cab with the bonnet. Yep. Two doors, uh, the very front of the engine compartment. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the seats. What is this? Is that's, this internal detail? That's the base of the cab, I believe. Okay. You have a, a mixture of lights and such down here. Mm -hmm. Steering wheel, mm -hmm. uh, entrenching tool. Yep. Uh, pick, driver, driver with his hands on the wheel. Mm -hmm. And these, which Benches. are seats for the back. Yes. Okay. So, looks to be a reasonably simple kit. Mm -hmm. Looks to be a very nicely detailed kit as well. Yeah. Anything else in the box? Oh, obviously, we can't not mention it. As always with the, the bolt action kits these days, you are getting yourself your rack markers, mm -hmm. which is a nice thing to have. Now, I want to highlight something in this kit. Some, okay. Something particular to this kit that I find really special. Okay. And you get a sheet of acetate. Okay. Uh, which is in the shape of the windscreens. Ah. So you get the front windshield so, and then the two windscreens either side. Yeah, if I can show this. So hang on, you will actually have windows in this thing? Yes, you'll get to cut those out and place them into the cab. That is a really nice touch to have, because normally whenever you see a vehicle like this, the windows are just hard plastic yeah. and done. You don't see inside the cab. Mm -hmm. You get your stack cards? Uh, you get the two cards, yep, for the, the Blitz and the Maltair. Yeah, I wonder if there's much change to the actual stats of them. Or is it just what they're like on different types of ground, because one's wheeled and the other is tracked? I, th I think they fall in the, the actual vehicle categories because you get rules for fully wheeled and half track. Ah, I see. You then get? Transfer sheet. Yes. So. Which has tons of variants, different Ooh, regiments. You it as a medical one. Yep, different regiments, different uh, arms of service. Even number plates. Uh huh. Very nice touch. 
See, this is the thing. You can go as far as you want with this, mm -hmm. and it's just it's nice to have those options. Yeah. Oh, you've got Africa Core in here. Yes. Nice. Yeah, because the, the Opal Blitz served everywhere. Really? From the start to the end of the war, yeah. The Blitzes mm -hmm. were everywhere. Right. And, okay, so this is just essentially your battle bus. Get troops. Two point A from point A to point B, get them out and get them fighting, and then this thing goes away. Yep, these these would have mostly been used with sort of motorized infantry mm. regiments or motorized infantry divisions. Yes, um, you typically wouldn't have seen the the two five one half tracks operating with these guys. The 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 five the two five ones would have been working with um, Panzer divisions, Panzer regiments, Panzer grenadiers, and stuff like that. Yeah, they were the guys that got all the fancy shiny stuff. Yeah, because that's something a lot of people forget is that. The, the German army that went from Blitzkrieg to the end of the war, mm. it wasn't evenly spread. This, this good tack wasn't spread evenly with everybody. Mm. The Panzer divisions and the Panzer Grenadiers got all the good stuff. Yeah. And the SS all got the good stuff. Yes. Everybody else was essentially working with what they had towards the end of the First World War. Right. Just trucks, horses, and feet. <laughs> now, th there's the thing. Was cavalry still used much by the Germans all the way through the war, or did it slowly fade away? Uh, cavalry wasn't really used at all by the Germans in the Second World War. Mm. Um, Just for transport and stuff, I'm guessing. Yeah, the, the, the majority of horses were for artillery mm. towing. Yes. Um, because there wasn't even enough Opal Blitzes to do that all the time. Yeah. And there wasn't enough of the big 7-ton, 12-ton Hannah Mags to, to tow the really big guns. So they yeah. just used horse trains all the time. Most, uh, well, see. most of the time. All right. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, John. How about you go away and build this one? Yes. And we will be right back. Okay, everybody, we are back. John, uh, you've built the Multair variant? I did, yes. This looks really, really nice. There's some great details on here yep. that you can play about with. If you like doing your weathering, your rust, your dirt and griming around like the tracks and the wheels and stuff, you mm. can do this. There's one thing you've done with this, John, that I'm surprised about. You've actually left it that the guys in the back can come out. Yeah. So you can have it empty yep. or loaded, which is a nice touch. I kind of like those. What I really like to do is magnetize them so that if mm. when you're playing a game and you have embarked troops on it, Mm -hmm. They're in it when uh, they when they disembark. Just take those guys out, and that actually denotes visually yeah. if the the truck's transporting or not. It's actually nice that the kit allows you to do that very yeah. easily. And I mean, like these guys, whenever you see them, just all lined up in a row, they are very very nicely detailed. They're just chilling. Yeah. The other thing is the way you've done this, John. It'll make it a lot easier to paint these guys yeah. if they're just being popped in and out. So nice. Yeah, I think it works. Okay, so Opal Blitzes and Maltairs. Yes. So you're saying mostly they were used on the Eastern Front during the thaw. Yeah. Were they effective? I would assume they are because you never see a lot of reports stating that their, their transport wasn't good. Mm. The problem with German transport trucks like the Maltair and the, the Blitz was that there just wasn't enough of them. Mm. Um, because they were moving, what was the size of the army that started Operation Barbarossa? Or Skinny, you could tell me that, but I'd say it's somewhere in the region of Three million. Right now, you have, that's a lot of men to shift. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't have that many trucks. Yeah, not to mention the fact that if the front's moving incredibly quickly, which it did, yeah. you know, keeping your your main military force up with the actual spear tip yeah. can become a bit of a problem. And you find that when you have a limited supply of fast moving mobile transport, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to be doing is sticking troops in that. Mm -hmm. What you need to be sticking in it is fuel and ammunition for the tanks that are up front that are yeah. doing the push. Well, th this then kind of makes sense because then after an area has been conquered, you have the foot sluggers, you know, marching in, taking a rest, yep. next set comes in, that set takes a rest, the set that's already there moves on and moves further into your occupied territory. Yeah, and what you find is a lot of the footage from the east, mm. uh, from the eastern campaigns, is the German army marching mm. because they just couldn't afford to have transport vehicles mm. moving men around when men are perfectly capable of moving on their own. Yes. Whereas fuel barrels and ammunition boxes aren't. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, we're, 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 we're kind of designed to move, so yes. Yeah. So uh, you, you see, for, for a lot of the, the footage that you see throughout the Second World War from the German side, you have to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt, because mm. most of the time it was um, the likes of Goebbels and that that were saying, film the good stuff, mm. film the Panzer divisions. You know, that's the glorious spear tip of the army. This is the thing. There was very much a thing of, like, all right, I know we talk about him a lot, Michael Whitman. Yeah. He was the poster boy. Mm -hmm. They wanted him filmed. They wanted him getting awards and stuff the whole damn time. Yep. But I am sure there are probably far more effective tank commanders out there. Kurt Nipsel. Really? Kurt Nipsel was better. Okay. Um, Kurt Nipsel 
was better, but disliked by the German high command because he generally didn't like to shave. Mm. He had tattoos. Okay. Uh, very, very, visi very visible tattoos. Mm. And he had an attitude which was borderline insubordinate. Really? Um, yeah, he did not like the, the high command of the German army. And I think that's possibly partly because I have a feeling that, that Nipsel was a professional soldier and nothing else. Mm. He wasn't a party man. He wasn't on the side of what the Nazis were up to and yeah. what their plans were. Yeah. He was a professional soldier and he just wanted to do his job. Yeah. And when he seen things not being done the yeah. way he believed it, he would react and he would bawl and shout at people and threaten people. Mm. Like, um, do you remember when I finished the... Uh, the SS project, and yes. we were talking about Kurt Nipsel's encounter with some Gestapo members. Uh, vaguely. Uh, Reiterate, re just in case everybody out there doesn't know it. The, a few guys corrected me on that, so I do appreciate that. Now, apparently, Kurt Nipsel's Tiger Troop was moving mm -hmm. in, the, in Russia somewhere, and they came across a bunch of Gestapo that were having a go at someone. Right. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember exactly if they were Jewish or not, or whatever was going on. Mm. And Kurt got out of his Tiger and came over and asked them what they're doing, and they said, well, They've done this, mm -hmm. we're interrogating them, and he's like, they're civilians, mm -hmm. let them go, they haven't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And the, the Gestapo guy sort of says, we're going to shoot them. You know, that's what we are here to do. These people are bad, we're going to shoot them. Mm -hmm. And Kurt Nipsel apparently turns to his Tiger troop and says, and points at the Gestapo guys, mm -hmm. and the Gestapo, all they see is five Tiger turrets swinging around to them. Oh. And the, it was one of those... Don't argue with me. <laughs> I but, have five tanks. But but that's why Kurt wasn't particularly liked by the high command. Mm. They they accepted that he was good, mm. um, but they didn't want him to be the poster child. It yeah. was far better, far more fitting soldiers yeah. in the SS and some of the the bigger Wehrmacht mm. units. Well, you see, this this is something that I've always got from like documentaries and stuff that I've seen from the era is that uh, oh, is there not something that the the Germans at the time they actually believed that depending on how someone actually looked, determined their place within society. That, so cranial size and measurements and things like that was used. That, that's a study, we kind of, we kind of touched it at a university, called phys physiognomy, mm. um, which is the study of facial features mm. to your... Your role. <laughs> no, it's more compared to your potential to be a criminal. Oh, um, okay. So there are certain facial features that... In centuries and decades past, mm. people said you could attribute certain facial features to a criminal. Ah, so because you look like a criminal, you might you. You ever get you ever get that oh, phrase yeah. when you see someone come up on the news mm. and it's like this person has been done for name of crime here, yeah. and you look at the picture and you go, he looks like a guy that would do that. Yeah. That's your head going low brow, wide eyes, yeah. or narrow eyes, and all these little fa facial features, and that played a part in. Mm some of how Nazi Germany operated in the background. Mm. It's also something we see in a lot of artwork. So yeah. it doesn't matter what genre or type you're looking at. If you look at, say, the propaganda posters of the time, mm -hmm. American propaganda posters, whenever it was showing a GI, you know, it was this lantern-jawed, upper crust, yes, I am man's man, I am what you believe a soldier should be. Yeah. Whenever they were showing Germans within those propaganda posters, you know, there was always a bit of a shift there. The Germans looked the, evil. The, the Germans they looked like the bad guys. The Germans played their own propaganda against themselves, and the Americans played it against them as well. The okay. Germans, the Germans love straight-cut, sharp-angled propaganda posters. Yeah, there's always a classic one of a German soldier, mm. uh, a sailor, mm -hmm. and an airman, mm. and they've all got the really sharp gen, mm. uh, chin. The the helmets cover the eyes. There's no eyes visible. It's a shadow. It's mm. a very straight almost automaton sort of look mm. and it's very powerful imagery D don't get me wrong it is yes. amazing looking imagery but the allies were able to counter that by making it look more sinister it, you, you can see the sinister very aspect. intimidating the yeah. way it's actually designed to begin with and whenever you're presented with that as these are the en enemy they they look intimidating i mean like i'm sure uh, from the german side of it these guys looked martial you know strength of the reich and all yeah. that but whenever you show it to the other side, they'll look at it and go, no, those are the bad guys. That now looks bad to me because of it. But so it, a lot of it is perception. But it, it's played off because mm. um, 
and I, I hate to bring this up, but okay. the, the American propaganda against the Japanese yes. was horrendous. Yes. If you, you look at that today, and if you're not shocked by how the, the, the Americans portrayed the Japanese mm. during the Second World War, it is awful. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's on the same par as the propaganda the Germans used against the Jews. Yes. It focuses on certain facial features, yes. particularly with the Americans versus Japanese. It's the skin color, it's yep. the, the eye shape. Yes. In Germany, of course, we know that you've seen plenty of the propaganda posters, how they portrayed the, the Jewish population and stuff yes. like that. And that is a horrible, a horrible thing to admit to, but it is the best way to motivate a people against someone else. Yes. It's to demonize. You to dehumanize them. Demonize, dehumanize how, what your enemy looks mm. like. Now, fortunately, I don't think the Brits were that badly hit by German propaganda, apart from many discouraging images and names of Winston Churchill. Of course. To be fair, he was a drunk guy most of the time anyway. And, and the, he was mildly a saint. And the British kind of embraced that. So. Yeah. <laughs> As our, our stiff upper lip proved yeah. during the war. Yeah, did you not tell me Churchill actually wanted to be on one of the ships at, at D-Day? He and wanted... The, the king had to turn to him and go, Winston, no, calm down. He wanted to be on the beach right behind the first wave. Really? He wanted to land oh. on like Gold or Juno Beach right after the first wave had cleared it. And even Montgomery and the king had to step in. And it was only when the king stepped in mm. that Churchill went, oh. OK, I will wait 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, all right, Winston. It's calm. still 24 hours. We may revisit this. Yeah, we'll talk about it in 23 hours and tell you no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the, the, there's something I always find with history. History is written by the victor. And so, I mean, like you talking about the, the Japanese propaganda that the Americans came out with. That's not something that's ever really taught in schools. No. You know, anything that, that the British would have done. I mean, like, there was one you told me about where German officers who had been captured were actually taken to a manor house here in England. It was lovely. They were actually set up in there. But they actually had the entire place bugged mm -hmm. to actually try and get secrets out of them. Yep. Clever way to do it. But we've done some shady stuff, too. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's hard to list some of the, mm. the crazy borderline legal things that the the army the allied armies the victorious yeah. allied armies did during the war mm -hmm. um spying on on german prisoners yes is probably one of the more milder ones that we've done again to be it's, honest it's one that i could quickly think of because you really have to dig to find some of this stuff yeah all right well <laughs> uh, i think we've winded on long enough uh that was the oval blitz multi-air unboxing uh how do you use them in your games of bolt action what interesting facts from the allied side of things do you have that you would maybe want to start a discussion with people about? Mm -hmm. Drop them in the comments below. We'll move on. We'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.